Hello. So today I'm just going to do a recap of my trip to San Francisco and the Game Developers Conference for 2024. Uh, just took a few pictures. I didn't really record any video, record any interviews down there. I do have some interviews scheduled with some people from different game engines. Um, O3DE, uh, The Mirror, Godot, and uh, I'm hoping to get a few more with some independent game development studios. They said they were going to email me this week, and we'll see if that happens or not. So I'm hoping. Um, so here I am at the convention floor. Uh, pretty simple. Um, this was one of the... Um, these aren't in any particular order. Uh, they're just throughout the day, uh, the two days at the convention hall. This was a talk put on by Tencent about their new game engine, the Gen X game engine. And basically what it is, is they're taking AI and building it into several features of a game engine. Level design, model design, uh, 2D art design, texturing, uh, even voiceovers and things like that will be integrated eventually. They're not there yet, but they're working on it. So this is their new in-house engine that they're building. And if, for those who don't know, Tencent Studios is one of the largest game companies in the world. Uh, they're based out of, I believe, it's Shanghai or Hong Kong, uh, but they're a Chinese game development company, and they're big. They do a lot of mobile games, a lot of uh, multiplayer games, and yeah, they just they have a, a lot of content uh, over in China, per se. Um, but that being said, uh, it was a really incredible how far this new AI movement is. I was blown away by how the AI movement is taking over the game industry. A third of the booths had something to do with AI and that is a lot. And in fact, a lot of the layoffs uh, were to do with AI. And for those who don't know, there has been a huge surge in layoffs in the game industry. Um, and it's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. In fact, at the award show, several of the creators there, um, they had uh, little speeches and talks about uh, the state of the game industry right now and the layoffs that are happening. So to work for a AAA studio is great. However, I think that uh, the job, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Job protection or um, longevity of your job may not be the greatest thing at this current state in time. And that may fix, who knows, things may stabilize, but there's a lot, there was a lot of scared people at the Comdex about job stability in the future. And a lot of it was to do with the AI. A lot of it was also just to do with uh, mismanagement and crunch time, crunch time was a big thing. So here's the um, entry to the exhibits. Um, over here on the right, there is the conference schedule and that chain, if it's something that's happening every hour and a half, it was pretty busy. My friend Abbott and I went to several of the uh, presentations. The previous slide was one of them. Uh, we also went to one about the development process and uh, for Final Fantasy. Went to a um, um, one of these t talks about the development of Microsoft's new game hosting solutions and scalability for servers and things. It actually looked really promising. Um, and coming from Microsoft, you know, they bought Activision and a few other studios lately. So yeah, they're they're big game company. And with their Xbox platforms and things, they're really, they wanna make sure they get hosting servers down and scalability right. They're putting a lot of money into it. Um, over here, uh, AWS had a booth going on. There is just a, there was a lot of people. This is just the main entrance of one of the halls. There were three halls there, multiple floors. Uh, the first two days we were there, the main exhibit floor was closed, uh, but these halls were all open and we took in a bunch of the um, talks and the conferences and things. So that was great, met a few people. Uh, lots of people though, I'd say over the course of the week, 30,000 people probably went through there. There was a lot of people. Uh, here was the Epic Games studio. Now, Epic Games sponsored the event, and Epic Games had by far the biggest uh, show 
place there. They also had private meeting rooms and security guards and things for that section that was roped off. Uh, but right here, I thought I'd take a picture. This is pretty cute. This is the Fortnite Llama, and this is all built out of Lego, so it was pretty cool. I don't know if I can zoom in on that. Yeah, I can zoom in a bit. You can see it's all Lego there. And then behind there, you can see the Unreal Engine. There was lots of stuff. The state of Unreal happened as well. There was a ton of things happening. I may make another video just based on the changes happening in Unreal this year. But basically, they've added, um, they've improved their procedural generation terrains. And now they've added procedural textures. So like your ground textures, your, your cobblestones and stuff, they'll be fully 3D realized, not just a bump map. So and there's a lot happening there. It's going to be pretty cool. There's the main entrance for it. As you can see, no expense spared. They also had a great big projector screen, like a, I don't know, it was probably like a 600 inch screen available. And uh, they, were, they were constantly showing off the state of Unreal on there. It was pretty cool. I watched a little bit of it, but um, mostly I went to around to all the other booths and stuff where I could actually talk to someone. Although I did talk right here at this purple wall. I did talk to, I think it's that dude in the toque actually. I think that's the guy I talked to. And he um, basically showed me how to do some prefab work and to set it up. And when you watch some of the tutorials and you're working through it on your computer, you know, it can seem a little tedious, a lot of work. Uh, he showed me how to do it and it was like 10 minutes I had it down. It was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you know, I've yet to practice it in, re in real world, but... I understood the process, so I think I'll be able to figure it out a lot easier in some of these videos. Uh, but yeah, it, it's pretty cool what's going on. And then they had a big thing on Fortnite now, and the Fortnite creators. So it, basically, they want you to come in, build your own Fortnite server, set up your own you know, world, and have people go play Fortnite in it. So it's kind of neat. And you can set up your own custom rules and stuff. You don't have to have just run around and shoot people. You can actually have a uh, hack and slash or fisty cuffs or whatever you want to do. Like they've given you a pretty big tool set to work with that. And the visual scripting and coding has been reworked specifically in there. So it's a little easier for the creators. You don't have to be a full on game developer. Anyway, they, they had a lot of stuff going on and just they've, they've, they've done a lot this year on their engine. They did a lot last year. You know, this year they've added a lot. Uh, my only real complaint about Unreal is that it's it's a bit bloaty. It's it's getting huge. You can do everything, right? Um, the other thing, oh, I'm just gonna go back one here. So the other thing is, is that you can't see it through here, but if you went through this way, there was a whole section on the basically how to use it for Hollywood. And for those who don't know, like The Mandalorian and Boba Fett and Ahsoka, a bunch of the Star Wars shows. We're all made using Unreal Engine's the main editor, compositor, and it, it's been used, uh, you, know, you know, models and things right in in engine right in front of you. So that's that's a huge industry for it. Uh, apparently, I've never touched it. I've watched a video or two. Apparently, it does it amazingly well, and it's a huge, huge speed up of time. They also had an announcement there that they changed the pricing for that particular thing, eighteen hundred bucks a year, if you're an uh, indie studio or whatever, and you want to use it. Um, so that, that's not bad if you're making money off it in the Hollywood industry. So it's a pretty reasonable price. I think for uh, like people who aren't commercial, you can still use it for free. Uh, Baldur's Gate. So Baldur's Gate swept the award show. Baldur's Gate 3, sorry. Uh, Larian Studios. They had a small little exhibition there, but they had a pretty big turnout there. Um, but they, uh, yeah, they just, their stuff was on, on sale. Or not on sale on on show, and they were just doing a little bit of a little bit of a show. The Godot game engine. The uh, Godot had a booth set up. Uh, quite a bit of people traveled for it. Uh, they came in, set up a booth. For those who don't know, uh, Godot is a truly open source game engine, and they had um, they also had it right, right around the corner over here on the left. You can't see it, but just off camera, there was the W four booth. And the W4 booth gets a whole bunch of funding and stuff to work on the Godot project. And they just recently announced uh, web servicing and server services and stuff for Godot. Uh, that was also an announcement here, so that was pretty cool. They got that all integrated in the next version coming out of Godot, which I believe any day now. Uh, I think it's coming in April 3rd maybe, so pretty quick. But yeah, they had a booth and a bunch of indie games on, on display there that are coming up and around. Um... 
this uh, qualysync.com or whatever, this was live action. So on screen here, you can see that there's two characters fighting with lightsabers. These people in stop motion suits. And up here, you've got full, full 360 tracking. And so it goes back to a software solution and it's displayed in engine, in game engine, and all motion captured live combat and everything right in front of you. It's a pretty cool display of their tech. Apparently, it's come way down in price. I'm not sure all these cameras were necessary. I think they were only using the small ones for this particular demo, but uh, they had them set up for because uh, I think there's also uh, heat and LiDAR and other things like that also happening that you can use with it. It's a multi-purpose um, platform, not just mocap. It also, I think, does thermal caps and things like that. But they're, they're pretty cool. And there was a bunch of AR things for like trades training and health and safety and th things like that as well. Uh, a few motion captures. There was one, I'm gonna probably do a, a picture on it, or not a picture, but a separate video on it showing how to use it. Uh, but there was one uh, booth there. They were, I think they were out of Denmark, possibly. A lot of Europeans. There was a lot of Europeans here. Um, but they were possibly out of Denmark. And they have a solution with an app where you take a picture, a face, selfie, and you upload it to the server. And then the server topographically maps it over a 3D avatar. And then you can choose that avatar, male, female, you can move sliders around to adjust the body shape, size, skin color, etc. Um, uh, different clothing, whatever. And then you can download those avatars and they come with like two level of details. I think like 10,000 polygons and like 3,000 polygons or something like that. So a couple different levels of detail. They're going to add more and they said they're going to be adding animals to it too. Like so you can actually like scan your dog and map it over a dog model and stuff. So of course I had to ask that question being a doodle owner. But anyway, so that's so there was some in interesting smaller booths. I probably won't mention all of them. Just as I come across them and remember them, I'll, I'll point them out. But there was some neat emerging technology there. Adobe Substance 3D and Adobe Substance Painter and their whole platform there. So because uh, I work for a school district, I had to go track these guys down. Um, because two things. One, I wanted to complain about their current licensing. They got rid of the persistence license, which is awesome like it, it's buy it once own the software use it as long as you need it until you have to update and then you need to pay for an update it's a great model subscription model here now so now you got to pay like i don't know 149 dollars for x amount of months or whatever to use it and it's an ongoing perpetual subscription and the more features you want the more you get so i had i talked to one of their marketing guys and said this is crazy especially for k-12 to like you you give away uh, college level licensing, cheap, it's not free, but it's cheap, but you have nothing for K to 12. And you know, it's like, you want people to come out and use your products when they get into the workforce. Well, where do you think that starts? It starts with students in grades 11 and 12, trying to uh, make their, you know, figure out what they want to do in the world and use the tools that the industry uses. If you're not gonna license to K to 12, well, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And those guys probably aren't going to touch a product and find some other way to do it moving forward. Like, you know, and by the time the 11 and 12s get out now, there's probably going to be other tools like Armor, Quixel Mixer, or, or right in the game engines to retexture models and things. Or Blender will have it built in, and Maya, and Maya will probably have it built in as well. So, yeah, I think they're hurting themselves by not offering educational licensing at the K-12 level, but whatever. Um, the other thing was that they showed off here was uh, they did have AI um, texturing and texture helping. It was much like the Adobe Firefly in Photoshop. It would you'd select areas, <coughs> pardon me, and like this area here, you'd say, "Hey, I want this textured with uh, I don't know a white brick repeating tile, or I'd like that to be that texture to be replaced with a green moss or whatever." And so you basically just mask out the area and then tell it what to do. So it's pretty good. It's, it's got a lot of advancements. It's slow-moving advancements like Adobe always is. But hey, you know, they're headed in the right direction except for their price point model. I hate their price point model. It is an amazing program, but their, mo their purchasing model sucks. Here I am with the <coughs> Jared. And sorry, I forget uh, I forget his lead developer's name, but on the left is lead developer, Jared's on the right. 
Uh, these are some guys I'm going to be doing a little bit of work with here. Um, this is the Mirror. It is an open source project and it is based on the Godot uh, behind the scenes, which is an open source uh, game engine. They've recently just dropped their whole network stack and everything uh, to open source. And it is basically, it's, it's kind of like a combo between Fortnite and Roblox. I wouldn't really call it either one of those though. It's a little different. Um, the closest thing I've seen to it in reality is the core. Uh, but they're doing some things different from the core that are going to really work well. So like you can direct link to your server. You're going to be able to have um, your your files and your models and avatars aren't going to be just the avatar set. You can have it when someone logs into your game, your main avatar, whatever that you use, changes out and you've got to create a character and stuff like that. So all that will be controllable by the person building their world in the mirror. So that's huge 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 potential right there and based on open source and based on the Godot engine I think it's got so much potential um, hopefully they do well and I'm gonna be working with their engine here and hopefully working with them maybe doing some models and stuff for them uh, in the near future so yeah it's uh, worth checking out uh, if you haven't already it's in early early stages but the uh, the alpha's up or the beta's up and you can actually uh, sign in and log on so it, it is ready to ready to to just check out what it can do. There are some suggestions and some things we talked about and um, they have some things already in the works that are awesome. Uh, Jared's a programmer here, he, he seems pretty amazing. He's got a couple others, but this guy really seemed to be on the ball and he's working on a bunch of things that I said, hey, you know, these are things we should be working on. He's like, yeah, it's already coming in the next release. And I'm like, holy cow, awesome, dude. These, they're, they're really passionate about this project, so it should be great. Uh, the, so there was uh, Control Alt Delete is a category for the Video Game Awards, and it is basically external controls besides like a game controller or your WSAD keys or your mouse in order to interact with the game environment. And so this was one that was pretty cool called Chair Devil, and there's these rollers down here, wheelchair strapped in, and there's an actuator motor here and an actuator motor here, and as you turn your wheels to move and you're rolling around it feeds back in and controls this wheelchair racing around this track in the game so that was pretty cool and there were other ones like one where you uh, built a house another one where you moved switches and dongles and things to uh, create create a path and clear a path for the player character would advance on the screen as you cleared the path for them so the control delete category is kind of neat because it steps outside the box and it does something a little different or sorry alt control uh, was what it was called um, so it was kind of neat. I like checking those out because it's, you know, it's a little more combining like some, maybe some robotics, uh, or some, uh, what do you call it now? Uh, co the control systems. So for those who don't know, like in mines and mills and industry, there's a lot of autonomic controls and things like that set up for belts to move, um, plungers to rotate, cylinders to turn. Um, a lot of a lot of controls in the field in, in industry and this really lends itself to people being able to really be familiar because it's you know one step removed having controls and stuff to power a video game to actually having controls and stuff for a system of some industrial equipment so it's kind of neat. having been in mining and in logging I've seen all those firsthand this is close. This is a good thing if, uh, and would really help you get into that automation um, and instrumentation field if you wanted to. It, it's just a great, great idea. Moving on, uh, I just had to get a picture with the Farming Simulator uh, 22 guys. So I played the original Farming Simulator years ago and living in Vanderhoof, which is big farm country here in the center of British Columbia. Uh, I had to get a picture with these guys just because, you know, farming simulator. And, uh, yeah, if you, it's, it's a bunch of fun. If you know anything about farming at all, it's kind of fun. It's one of those kind of like SimCity type or whatever, but you're building up your farm. So, anyway, I had to get a picture there. It was just kind of cool. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's the, the geekiness in me, the small town guy, but I thought it was kind of cool. Alicia, now this booth was kind of interesting, and I, I took a picture of this for a reason. You see the guy here with the headset on? So this is basically World of Warcrafty looking in-game, 
but it is a massive multiplayer online game in VR. And so it was pretty cool. These guys are a small studio. There's like five or six of them. I had a chat with uh, their, their lead coder there, and wow, the guy was freaking smart. Heads, heads, and, heads and tails above me. But yeah, so we got, uh, I got a chance to check that out, and that looks really promising. Uh, it's in beta now, but I think it's coming out, uh, I think it is coming out in 2024. Uh, might be a 2025 release. There were a bunch of the games on the show floor that will be coming out for the 2026 releases. Um, so I didn't really cover those in my in my pictures and stuff because they're a couple of years away yet, right? And they may never see the light of day. They might, but since this one was a, 20, a late 2024 release, I think that uh, you might even be able to sign up for Alpha on it now, but it looked really cool anyway. So I, I, let me see. Uh, uh, here we are at the show. Now this hall was huge. Uh, we were kind of over, we sat over at the one end here. The main speaker was kind of right behind the podium. Uh, but this went uh, oh, way, way over, like double what this is now. And it had, I don't know, it probably had two, 3,000 people in, in here, maybe more. It, it was a pretty packed show. And this was the Video Game Choice Award. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that little, uh, little hiccup either. Um, so there's the award for that Control Alt that I was talking about, like the wheelchair. Uh, there was uh, some interesting house things and stuff. So I just got a bunch of pictures here. Uh, this is all available online in videos. They put it all up afterwards. You can watch it if you're interested. Uh, there's guy accept in there. I just wanted to get a few pictures of the stage and stuff and some of the categories. It was quite the presentation. It, you know, it's a full-on award show and stuff, and I've never been to one, so I was pretty impressed. Um, it's kind of neat to be to one. I can mark it off the bucket list. Uh, excellence in design. So this was for indie games. Uh, anywhere where this lady here, I forget what her name was now. She had a pretty cool name. Um, was hosting, it was for the indie indie designs, and then the AAA studio stuff was afterwards. So, uh, Crypt Master, small studio, excellence in design. It was basically a black and white first person dungeon crawler, kind of like the old days, the Light and Magics or whatever, the old Dungeons and Dragons ones. Uh, first person crawl through, but it was kind of, you know, modern, but black and white. It was, it was pretty neat. Um, excellence in visual arts. Um, not sure what that is, but uh, font. Yeah, not sure. Sorry, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it was pretty neat. The the art in it and stuff. Uh, they showed some on screen. Uh, Excellence in audio, rhythm doctor. You know, one of those kind of beat matching. You know, like Beat Saber or rhythm dance dance revolution sort of things. One of those type. Um, then went into the AAA now. The these pink logos changed, so it went from the these and that lady hosting to this lady hosting here and the best in technology picture here is the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom so it looked pretty darn amazing i'm sure a lot of people have already played it at this point in time but it got that award and it got uh, nominated for many many more best design went to gold baldar's gate 3 um no surprise baldar's gate 3 cleaned house on a lot of these awards um, best visual art, Alan Wake 2. Uh, interesting, I hadn't heard of it. I, I think I'd heard of it in passing, but I hadn't really heard of it. So I know it had got a lot of a wish list or something. So, um, uh, best narrative, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, this one was neat. So Yoko Shimomura. So she got in doing like, uh, fighting game music years and years ago. She was early on. Um, a musical artist and she basically had gotten her foot in the door did a few like uh, I forget what they were but uh, kind of like Mortal Kombat's but they weren't they were more the, the, the 2D simpler 2D ones at that point in time and she's been working in the industry for years and years and years and doing audio and and she was one of the first females to be able to break ground she had uh, been a Japanese woman too that was something else because she moved to uh I think it was San Diego, she said. I think she moved to San Diego at one point in her life. and um, So anyway, just amazing achievements out of her. And she got a Lifetime Achievement Award. So that was pretty awesome. Um, best audio, period. Hi-Fi Rush. That was another audio game. It was like an action music game uh, where you know the chords and stuff play along the beat. But it was also like an action combat using the music sort of thing. It looked pretty adrenaline-packed, to be honest. It was a pretty high-paced game. 
So I guess Hi-Fi Rush was pretty uh, pretty adequate. So if you like those type of games, uh, definitely check it out. It looked like it would be fun to play if I was into those. And then Game of the Year, Baldur's Gate 3. And this is the Lorian Studio guys. Now, they came up here and they did a big speech about the state of the game industry and the layoffs and stuff. And there were a couple of others that also did that. And there was also some... There was some... Another Lifetime Achievement Award for another guy, or Achievement in something, something. And uh, they were from the Middle East, and the guy had come, and he was like the first, jeez, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say anything in, in politically incorrect here, but he was like the first, I think, Muslim to get into the game industry and to do, um, to, to really make something and, and to bring the game industry back to that area of the world and to get it established, get a few studios up and get a lot of people recognized uh, and get their career started out of that area and he literally wrote the book on game development in the uh, language native to that region and I forget the name of it right now I know it I just don't tip my tongue I just can't say it um, but anyway yeah so he wrote the game game development book and into that language and so he got a another lifetime achievement award uh, but yeah so these guys were they accepted that, that but they also talked about the state of the industry and they also talked about that they're not doing a follow-up to Baldur's Gate 3. They're going to go on to do their own intellectual content. Uh, but they probably will do a mod pack kit for it so that uh, users can actually mod the uh, game themselves. So they're, they're working on that now. They'll get that out. But basically that was it. That was the GDC uh, 2024. So I'm going to end this video here. It went on for a bit long, but that was, uh, that was basically what I got. And there was a lot of other things I'll talk about in upcoming videos um, as I cover them to, to kind of talk about how they went into uh, how the game industry is changing and evolving rapidly. Like it is crazy how all the big players are changing their products and how the use of AI is really becoming um, dominant and there was a huge push and how the... The state of the industry is going to change and there's not going to be 400 artists on a project anymore. There's not going to be 50 developers on a project anymore. Uh, and hopefully there won't be crunch time. Hopefully they'll manage that a little better too. So anyways, this has been great recap. Um, and for those of you who watched it to the end, awesome. Comment below. Let me know you watched it to the end. And have a great, uh, have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.